an old Mamod traction engine rebuild. This is part one. And it's called having a play with the engine, and why not? A few weeks ago, a young viewer asked me if I would show my model collection, which I did. And part of my model collection is this Mamod tractor. And it's not to be confused with the large Buddle traction engine behind it. I bought the Buddle traction engine from the Steam Workshop, but I don't know where the Mamod came from. I think someone gave me it. The previous owner of the house that I live in left a Mamod tractor like this one in the workshop, but I gave that to a friend of mine. I'm doing this series because I have been asked by various viewers if I'd do something about Mamod steam engines. And if I was going to do something about Mamod steam engines, I would wind the design back to be the same design as they were in the 1960s. I mean, look at the state of this horrible whistle with a piece of bent tin to operate it. On the original ones, it was quite a finely made small whistle with like a taper plug cock on it. And to make matters worse, this one will not come out, and neither will the plug on the back head. It seems to have a nut soldered to the boiler, and this is loose. But eventually, the whole thing came away from the boiler, so that's not too bad. It would appear that the design of this particular Mamod TE1 is somewhere in between the time when they had a filler plug and the later design of a piece of glass as a water gauge so you can see how much water you have in the boiler. Before I run the engine, I need to oil it thoroughly. I even put some oil on the whistle, but it's still not coming out of the boiler. I think the entire bush is spinning round. And besides, something has to be done, because when I put some compressed air into the boiler, the whistle blows all the time, so internally it's stuck as well. How much compressed air am I putting in the boiler? Well, very little. About £10 per square inch, or maybe less. These small steam toys are not designed to use high-pressure steam. So if you're thinking about doing this, make sure you have a regulator on the end of your compressed air line. These are brass boilers, and as such, are totally unsuitable for high-pressure steam. So £10 per square inch is absolutely the maximum amount of air I would put into a boiler like this. I'm going to run this using steam, but first of all I need to fix the whistle. The bush is loose, but I'm not too worried about it blowing out at £10 per square inch, because I can't get it out, even with a large pair of grips. Time to see if it runs. And of course it does, I knew it would, because it's a steam engine, and steam engines will run even if they're in very bad mechanical condition. Time to try it in reverse, and yes, it goes backwards too. These small Mamod steam toys were very much a mass-produced item, made, I believe, by a company called Malins Models. That's M-A-L-I-N-S. And I'm surprised at some of the variations of pronunciation on the word Mamod. Recently I was watching a TV programme, where on the TV programme they repair things. On this TV programme they were working on the steam car, and the man repeatedly called it a Maymod. And then, of course, there's the spellings on eBay which are quite amazing sometimes. Mamoud, Mamon, Mumod, which is all a bit odd to me because the spelling of the name is written on the model. I tested and lubricated the safety valve, that lifts okay, and I've just filled the boiler, I'm tipping some of the water out so it doesn't prime when it first runs. I've also refitted the level plug at the back and now it's the exciting part. Filling and lighting the methylated spirit burner. Obviously, first of all, I'm filling it with some methylated spirits. And already it's taking me back to when I was a child. I don't mean by actually drinking the methylated spirits, just the smell of it. This brings back memories that have been shouted at by my parents for doing this on the kitchen table. It seems to me to be fairly impossible to install a methylated spirit burner in a Mamod traction engine without spilling some meths on the table. I really enjoyed that, so when the flame went out, I poured some more meths on the table and lit it. Welcome to the Pyromaniac's Guide to Methylated Spirit Burners. The spirit soon evaporates and the flame goes out. And this also degreases the top of the bench to a limited extent. After a while, the pressure begins to rise, and as you can see, surprise, surprise, it's leaking around the whistle. And the whistle isn't blowing because I pushed a piece of silicone rubber tubing over it. A quick test to see how much steam I have, and to make sure that the safety valve is definitely blowing off, and yes it is, and off it goes.
This reversing lever is quite a clever innovation really. On the one I had when I was a child it had a valve on the pipe that comes from the boiler to the cylinder and you could regulate the steam that way. And I don't remember it having a big lever with a plastic knob on the end to make it go in reverse. The lever's a good idea for a couple of reasons. One is it has this plastic end on it so you don't burn your fingers and you can move it in different positions between forward and reverse and this regulates the speed of the engine. I think it's time for some slow motion. As you can hear it's knocking a bit but this is hardly surprising. The bracket that supports the crankshaft is very badly bent so the crankshaft isn't even in line with the cylinder. But because it's a steam engine, albeit an oscillating cylinder steam engine, it still runs anyway. Time to run the video at normal speed. I'm going to slow down the video and change the angle. Look how much side play and lack of concentricity there is in the flywheel. There's very little pressure inside this boiler. When I lift the safety valve, hardly any steam comes out of there. The engine though has been running for quite a while, far longer than you're seeing on the video, so I think the burner needs refilling. Time to look at the mechanical aspect and see whether or not I can improve it. First of all, I'm going to straighten the bracket. I'm putting a lot of pressure on here with this pair of pliers. And I'm about to show you a secret way of fixing things. But before that, warning, do not do what you're about to see under any circumstances. As you will probably destroy the mechanism entirely, plus you may also burn yourself as everything on the engine is very hot. First of all, I need a delicate and sensitive specialist tool. Yes, you've guessed it, it's a soft hammer. And now the engine runs, well, a lot better than it did before. But seriously, please bear in mind, I control these tools really accurately. I've done it for many, many years, I know where to hit it, and how hard to hit it. And obviously, the engine should not be in steam when you do things like this. But as I said earlier in the warning, do not do it. I'm sure I'll receive many comments and some death threats from some of the more extreme mammod fanatics out there in the world. I must be doing something right because the engine is definitely running now much better than it did to start with. One problem with these Mammoth steam tractors is every bit of the engine except for the front wheels gets really hot. The main axle for the rear wheels goes through the firebox on top of the flame. The heat of the flame, which is considerable, not only boils the water in the boiler but it heats up the axles which in turn heat up the back wheels. Also, at the front of the engine, the smoke box and chimney also get very hot. That's a good thing though, because a lot of the steam coming out of the chimney is now steam that's been generated by boiling inside the smoke box. The whole thing is running a lot more smoother than it did originally. You may be thinking, well, where do I go from here? The only way I can get the whistle out of the boiler is to pull it out with a lot of force, which will damage the boiler. For now, I'm quite happy to run it. In fact, I've put it on top of my big traction engine and now it's almost out of steam. I'm going to rebuild this and make it into a nice thing. I've already bought some parts off eBay to do this. I could buy a brand new engine or a much newer one than this that works okay. But instead, I was lucky enough to find an unfired old boiler and firebox assembly. A very good start, I think, to a rebuild. And that's it for the first episode. Stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.